Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. It has been a couple of weeks since I've had a video out and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is I've been really, really, really busy with work. You might have heard of a little event that's going on up here in Scotland at the moment called COP26. My work is all over that and I've had quite a bit to do for that. And the other is I might have a bit of the sort of uh, Barry White's about my voice at the moment and over the past week I've been knocked for six but I've had this horrendous sort of cold bug sort of thing. Th thankfully, not COVID, but horrible bug nonetheless, sore throat, cough, eyes have been watering and my sinus, oh, it's been horrible. I'm just about sort of on the mend now, but not to worry, I've got some, some tea here. And we all know that tea fixes absolutely everything. So I've not been up to the plot either in about two weeks. So hopefully I might get up there during the week and, and get some jobs up there done and I'll I'll show you some things that are going on up there and I think things like the purple sprout and broccoli and that, I don't hold out much hope for it. I suspect it's in, in the full bloom of flowers by now because I've because I've missed a lot of it while whilst I've not been up there. But not to worry, I've still got a few things on the go. We've got the garlic, the onions and shallot planted as I'm pointed over there that you can't see in the little greenhouse that's outside. So hopefully by the end of the month or so, next couple of weeks we'll have them ready to plant out. Anyway, right, seeds to sow in November. Believe it or not, there's still plenty to be getting on with at this time of the month. I would say it's well and truly autumn outside, but it only kind of is, so the garden is absolutely covered in leaves, and hopefully at some point I'm gonna get those raked up and we'll get them added to the leaf mold. It's really, really wet outside. For the last week, with the exception of Saturday in one day, it has not stopped raining. It's been absolutely chucking it down and I mean proper rain it's been torrential but it's been really strangely warm so the temperature has been sort of earlier in the week about 15 degrees still which is really odd for this time of year and maybe it's COP26 is up or something with that but I'll, I'll come to the temperature in a little bit when I talk about some of the seeds but I've got a couple of other things over here first is this is the DT brown seed brochure as you all know, I use a lot of DT Brown Seeds, not affiliated with them, not paid by them, they don't give me anything whatsoever. I just like using their stuff. And now is a great time of year to get something like this. These are free to get these, these seed brochures. And there's loads and loads and loads and loads of different ideas and things in. And I like just sitting down, peace and quiet, not on a computer, not looking through a web website, flicking through an actual book and looking at the seeds and the flowers and all the different things you can get and maybe make some plans for next year and think about some different things that you can grow that you've maybe not thought of. So that's one thing to say. Next is this. I've finally given in and bought one of these. I've seen these on Tony C. Smith's channel and I'm sure there's loads of other people who use them. And what it is, it's actually a case that's used to store photographs in and it's got a couple of clips on the front here. Now, I've never opened it before so I might I don't know where the clips are and things. And inside it, there's all these other individual cases where you would normally see, you know, imagine old style photographs, these sort of six by fours. You'd pop them in there and keep them all nice and nice and sorted in there. But what you can do is store your seeds in them. And because there's, there's 24 of these individual boxes in here, I can label them all up with what the different types of seeds are, you know, whether I go with brassicas or whether we have individual sort of, you know, cucumbers or something like that. Because at the moment, I've got two big carrier bags full of seeds and they're a right mess. So over the next few weeks as well, I'm going to be making the most of this, make the most of the rubbish weather, get these sort of indoor jobs done. But what I'll do is I'll put a link to this in the description below if anybody wants to go and see them and have a look at them. You know, Christmas is coming up and stuff like that and great, great sort of presents for gardeners and allotment tiers alike and helps you sort your seeds out and whatnot. And I was speaking of which, I was thinking about maybe doing the thing for Black Friday about any good gardening deals I see for that. So watch out for that video coming later in ooh, November, because Black Friday is towards the end of November. Anyway, right, on to seeds. So I was saying before the weather is a bit a bit iffy outside, but it's really unseasonally warm. And it has been for the past, probably the past two months at least, it's been weirdly warm for this time of year. So I'm going to take a bit of a gamble on some of these seeds and plant some that I normally wouldn't do it this year. So if you hear any odd seeds that I'm talking about, some of them, you know, the back of the packets and things like that say, oh, latest sowing September, you know, at the end of October, very end of October, again, I'm filming this, ready for November. 
I'm just going to take a chance. You know, maybe it's going to grow a little bit and then the really cold weather will come in November. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's going to grow really well. But I'm just going to take a chance. Nothing to lose. I've got the seeds. I've got the soil. I've got the compost. Stick them in. See what happens. If they don't grow very big, they don't grow very much, snip them off. Use them as microgreens and amongst salads or cooking or whatever. So it's not a total waste. I mean, mi microgreens, they're not... They're not a great use of space because you don't get a lot of return on what you're putting into it. So you're spending money on it. I know I said I've got the seeds and the compost and stuff, but you're spending money on things. And in terms of the amount of space that you take up with them, it's not a great return on investment. I don't think microgreens, but it's better than nothing. So if your crops aren't going to fully, fully grow, fully mature, use those microgreens and you're still getting some something out of them. Better than nothing. Right, on to the first selection of seeds here. And first up is kale. And this is a variety called Midnight Sun. So now the weather's pretty good for certain things and brassicas are one of those things that, that like this kind of weather. And this is a good example to, just to start off with where it says on the front of the packet here, the last sort of sown date is September. Nothing to lose, gonna give them a bash, get them grown. Cauliflower is a certain variety of cauliflowers that do really well in the colder months. This is a variety called Orkney F1. So I'll be getting those started off. Swiss chard, Swiss chard is probably the most indestructible crop I've ever come across. You can get the rainbow chard as well, it's all different colors. This one's just a sort of plain white one with the, with the greeny colored leaf. It is indestructible. It will grow anywhere and in any weather. Give it a shot, you might be surprised at what you can get. And last but not least, these two together, the Chinese kale and the pak choy, Asian greens again grow really, really well at this time of year. They don't like it really, really warm, don't like it really, really cold, but this sort of springtime early in the year, autumn late in the year, and again, this unseasonably warm weather, absolutely great for just keeping things like this ticking over and get some good crops out of them. One thing I am probably going to do with these is just, you know, I said the other day it was 15 degrees out there, but some of the seeds need a minimum of seven or eight degrees to sort of germinate there so i might just get the heated propagator out get these started off in the house fire them into the greenhouse cold frame sort of thing out there then get them transferred up in the plot that'll be the sort of process that i go through with most of these next up is radish and this is black spanish round you might have heard me mention this before and again this is another one here back of the packet last sown day outside october 31st of October today, you know, it is warm. Get them planted, get them grown. These ones here, I've got some of these in the ground already at the allotment. I've only harvested one and I gave it to my mum and dad. And they both said they were really, this was really, really spicy hot. So I'm gonna grow some more and we'll see what they're like. And we'll get the ones that are up there harvested pretty soon. On to the last batch of seeds for this video. And these are all very similar. These are all lettuces. So you can still get lots of greens grown throughout the winter again. Keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing. Pick them, sow them, pick them, sow them. Keep that sort of going throughout the winter. Keep picking. You've got a supply of lettuce, that supply of green leaves during the winter for salads or with meals or whatever you want to use them with. So some different types of lettuces here to try. One of the favourite ones here is Marvel of the Four Seasons. Again, a DT Brown one's there, which is great. Winter Imperial all the year round. You see that the clues, the clues in the name on a lot of these uh, these ones, Marvel of the Four Seasons, Winter Imperial, and all the year round. And the next one, Arctic King. So you can see they're all, they're all designed to keep growing into the colder months and into the winter there. And last but not least, another couple, the last but not least, uh, I've got it in my head because I'll tell you what's coming up next. Last but not least is a salad leaf called Mizuma, and that's a sort of Japanese rocket kind of thing. And it's really, really, really hardy. And that'll grow all the year round, all the way through the winter as well. It's another one of those things, a bit like the chard, it's almost impossible to kill it off. So give some of that a shot and get some greens grown during the winter. And this as well is mustard spinach, otherwise known as Komatsuna. I do have some of this grown at the plot already. It has grown really, really, really well. So I'm going to grow another round of that. That's successional sowing, like I was talking about the lettuces, that sort of Keep them sown, keep them grown, keep picking them, keep it going all the way throughout the winter, and at least there's that little bit of greenery there to keep you going. This is another one again, it's talking about sown here. The last sown date is October, but I'm just gonna push my luck and give it a shot. 
Anyway, that is the seed selection that I'm going to be doing throughout November. So watch out for the videos for these coming and getting sown and planted out up at the allotment. I'm planning on getting up to the plot during the week sometime. It's desperate for a bit of tidy up. There's some covers needed on some of the beds, like the potato beds and things like that. Get them all covered up. But now that COP26 is underway and work's quieting down, hopefully this cold is going to keep lifting so things get a little bit better for me health-wise. We'll get up there and we'll get loads of jobs done. Anyway, that's me done for today and we will see you on the next one. Bye for now, folks.